Okay, here on Uber Rock, we're here in London at the moment, and I'm talking to the uh, guitarist Gus G. How you doing, man? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Good. Just, uh, and, uh, to fix his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we can have an arm wrestle yeah. with him in a minute. <laughs> and uh, you got a new album coming out with Firewind. Few yeah. against many. Yes, May 21st. Out in Europe, May 22nd, North America. Just worldwide. You know? And it's the uh, it's seventh studio seventh, album. Seventh, yeah. And, uh, and this time you've gone in a more heavier direction. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was um, it was an element that I I wanted to bring out a bit more. Um, I just thought we just need to have a little bit more guitar in there and um, just play around with new grooves, new kind of riffs and stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff. There's actually some even more um, extreme side of us. It's the more extreme side of us on this record as well. You even hear some more thrashy kind of elements in there, which is cool because I mean I'm I'm into all you know the. The classic rock guitar players and heavy metal, but I'm also into um, you know bands like um, Death or Pantera, I like talking about the guitar players, oh. Dimebag or yeah. Chuck Schuldiner and stuff. So I, I'm also influenced by that stuff as well. Um, anyways, I mean it still sounds like fire. When it's just getting in, you know we got just got into a bit more of a heavier direction this one. And it, but it still sounds very predominantly firewind, doesn't it? It does. I mean once once Apollo's voice comes in, you you know it's us really. Yeah, yeah. So. And uh, what was your favourite songs on the album yourself? Is there any ones you really enjoyed? I, I like all of them right now. I mean, I'm just, um, you know, just finished the production and everything. So I'm, I'm very excited about all the material. I mean, I, um, I like the song Losing My Mind. I like um, Undying Fire. Another Dimension, that's a very yeah. interesting song, a very different song. Um, I don't know, yeah. I like uh, Long Long Tomorrow. It's got a really cool groove, almost like an old school hard rock, yeah. but. Um, but in a very heavy modern way. And there's one song that I like very much, it's uh, Edge of a Dream. It's like sort of a haunting ballad kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes. I mean, that's the, uh, that's how to say it, the softest song on the yeah. record. I mean, there's not even any drums on it or any rhythm, you know, distorted guitar. It's just piano and uh, we've got the guys from Apocalyptica on it. So right, yeah. I think that's one of the highlights of the album as well. It's a very different song, even for a ballad for us. It's a very different kind of a feel and type of song. It's like it's not like a ballad in the, in the general. Like um, RVO speed wagon kind of battle, or even a power battle, is it? No, no, it's exactly. a unique song in many ways. It is because we've done like those kind of power ballads in the past, but uh, this one was more like a yeah, like a like a grand piano kind of song. And uh, I was a bit skeptical about it in the beginning, but then I thought that's a beautiful song. And uh, I thought if we had like cellos on it, and especially mm. the Apocalyptica dudes, it, it would really lift it up. And um, it worked out really well. It's and how, how, did that, how did that union come about with uh, Apocalyptica? Well, it's, uh, it was one of those things where well, we'll get nothing to lose by asking. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't know any of the guys. We just asked our manager to send them. Do you know any cello players? Oh, yeah, we do, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, the thing is, if they didn't do it, well, of course, we would probably hire somebody else yeah. from an orchestra to play, but we said we've got nothing to lose to, uh, to ask those guys. And uh, we asked our manager to send the, the track to their manager. And then we just waited for a while. And then a few days later, they got back and said, hey, it's a great track. We'd love to be a part of it. And, Fantastic. Uh, yeah, it was good. It's definitely one of the highlights of the album, I think. And uh, have you shot any promotional videos yet for any of the songs of the album? No, uh, the first video is coming out uh, a few weeks, I think, early May or something. I'm gonna, yeah. It's for the song Wall of Sound. Oh, that's the actual uh, the album opener. That's the album opener, that's the first single as well in video. Okay, and um, obviously, you can't have a new Firewind album without a, a new Firewind drummer. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's kind of like a, uh, that's our theme. New album, new drummer. We're kind of like Spinal Tap. Yeah. Now the thing is with Michael, you know, Michael Era, our previous drummer, he um, he didn't play on the last album. Mm. Uh, it was Mark. Of who, course. Who, yeah, yeah, who was uh, he was in, in the band for quite a while. So he played on the last three albums. But then when we decided to change drummers, then M Michael got in. He did all the photos and videos and all that stuff. And uh, and then he basically stayed with us for probably a bit less than a year, so we, it was not a year where we were doing a lot of stuff. I was out with Ozzy, so we only did yeah. like 10, 12 shows with him. And um, yeah, it was a very quick change. So there wasn't really a lot of uh, time for us to get to know each other and just really, uh, you know, get a solid uh, band there. I mean, he's, he's a great uh, he's a great player. He did, he did some really good shows with the guy, but he just wanted to do other stuff. And um, funny thing with Joe is, um, he came in to, re to really fill in for the shows and really help us to get, get us through the European and US tours in the, pa in the, in the in last fall. Yeah. And it worked out so great with him and uh, we just asked the guy, it was a natural thing to ask him to join the band and, and play on the album. 
And he's in the band full time now, I believe. Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. 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 he played on the album and he did an amazing job. And what, what was the chemistry with the band in making the album? Because obviously there's a little time last year or the year before when he did tour and uh, Apollo, who sort of boxed out of the, uh, the European dates. Yeah. Was there a time when you thought, is he going to leave the band? Or was he? Well, it was a time actually, to be honest with you, where I was thinking, is there going to be any band? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I thought, you know, I obviously had. I was. I knew that after the Aussie tour ended, I was going to have a, a year, possibly two years yeah. ahead of me, just to do whatever I wanted. And uh, I had to make sure if uh, making another Fireman album was what I wanted to do because I needed all the guys to be there. Yeah. And uh, you know, really, to be honest with you, those fall tours we did in Europe and the US were really to kind of get back together and, uh, of course, to play for our fans, but also to see how it's working out after a couple mm. of years and um, with all these big changes that happened. And just to see what the vibe is, and we really had a good time. Obviously, we didn't really we, we were off to a wrong start with Apollo not being able to join, and then you know we sat down and said, you know, listen, if you're gonna decided to move on with us, you, you really cannot you know cancel any gigs. We we really appreciate you have you might have issues back home or whatever that is. I don't care, but uh, you know we need you to, we need you on board, and um, otherwise just let us know what's going to be. And, and, he, and he decided to he he decided to yeah. stick with the band and. Indeed, you know, he, he came back for the US tour, he did the album, and uh, he is committed to the... You know, to and I think he's a fan's favor. I think the fans obviously want him there as well. Of course, yeah. I mean, uh, you know... So, the, you know, the fans see him as much as five wins as... It is, it is. I mean, he, he's, he's, no, he's done... This is their fourth album with Apollo. Yeah. He's been there since 2005, and since really the band started... Yeah, it's happening a bit more. Getting so, length itself, yeah. So, uh, yeah, most of our fans know us with Apollo. So uh, of course we want him to be there. Well, so did that cause ruptures? Like when you got the job at Bozzy Osborne, obviously it's no brainer. You got to take it. Yeah, of course. But obviously the band might be thinking. You might be saying to the band, "Don't worry, lads. I'm only going away for a couple of years. I think it'll be fine and dandy." But obviously they might think differently. The thing is, you can. We, you know, I was honest to the guys, and I said that. You know, I said this exact same thing. And you know, we will be doing stuff on the time off, and um, you know, once that tour is done, and we'll, we'll get back with another album tours and all that, and we'll get back to work. And in the meantime, you guys do what you got to do. But it's easier said than done, you know. There is that definitely caused a bit of a, you know, turbulence within, you know, in our personal relationship with the guys because, okay, we we can agree to something, but you know, a year and a half it might sometimes seem a bit longer than it actually is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I did stick to my word, and yeah. we did get back. We did book those tours. We did them, and we went back to see all our fans, and we worked on a, on this album. And like I said, it was a little bit of a weird. Um, weird times for us with yeah. all the changes happening at the same time but we uh i'm glad that we pulled it off and uh we're back with our strongest album you've actually done pretty well actually because it's only two years since days of defiance and obviously you've done that album tour de now, now see that's the thing a lot of people and come, you're come back, back already, and tell me you know? yeah a lot of people come back and tell me well why so soon i'm like well if i think about it it wasn't that soon it's been a lot of fucking shit in the middle you know in, in between and we actually hadn't toured for a couple of years and uh but still, people think that I guess I guess that's a good thing because uh, people think that we're um, we never went went away. Yeah. So maybe some of the guys in the band felt that oh people are gonna you know it's not really happening anymore. But but we actually never went away. We were actually doing stuff even on the on the Aussie tour breaks. You know we went to Japan. We did festivals. We did a bunch of stuff. So well, many times with Aussie, he was actually playing the festival dates. He was playing at twelve o'clock in the morning with fire. We, we did that as well. We did that a couple of times as well. We did that in, in France and Belgium. So that happened as well. So, yeah, it's not like the band stopped them or anything. And um, I was gonna think that, you know, in today's music industry, albums come out much faster. But uh, two years, I, you know, I didn't expect actually that reaction. Well, why so soon? I'm like, when should we fucking do it? Like five years later, yeah. nobody will remember about us. <laughs> <laughs> I think in many ways, like working with Ozzy Osbourne has been a positive thing for Firewind. Oh yeah, a lot of, it, it's only done good. A lot of fans only know you from Ozzy, and they'll be checking out Firewind. Yeah, that has happened a lot, of course, and. Uh, and then again, like I said, it's even if the band was away not touring, it never really went away because the name was always out there yeah. and growing. So uh, that gave new value to the band. Fantastic. And tell us about the artwork. Because you've used the, the artist, and you must tell me how to pronounce his name properly. Gustavo Sazes. Yeah, yes. He's, he's, he's a Brazilian guy. He's been with us for the last uh, well, two albums. He did Premonition cover, he did uh, the live Premonition, and Days of Defiance, yeah. So he's, he's been our guy since 2007 and uh, 2008. And... Uh, it was a no-brainer to work with him yeah. again because he really understands what the band's all about and um, you know when I explained the vibe of the new album and everything what I wanted to do he, he really came up with it like right away so it's very easy to work with this guy and he uh, 
he's you know he's one of the really true believers, and we want these kind of people on our side. Yeah, excellent. And um, tell us about your touring plans because I think the first day you got lined up is actually the Download Festival here in the UK. Yeah, that's where that's when it starts, and then we move on in July with more festivals in Europe. Then we go to China and Taiwan in August, and then then it's a European tour with Leaves Eyes. That's towards about October time, I believe. Isn't it? September, October, and there's going to be more dates added before that. So yeah, and then I think US. It's just going to be busy. You, know, you just mentioned China, and you also playing Taiwan, and obviously not many bands get to play in places. So how did that come about? Yeah, it actually was um, a promoter got in touch with us, and uh, when I heard about it from uh, from our manager, I said, you know what, I we got to go there. That's one place we really got to know. We got to go because I know a lot of bands are going there. I know the, the market's opening up. I know people want to see more and more metal shows there, and. Uh, it's gonna be an adventure, man. It's like exploring mm. a new territory, and you never know what that will um, that will bring for the future, what that might uh, you know unfold in the coming years. So uh, kind of, I'm getting the same feeling, kind of like the when I first went to Japan ten years ago. Uh, so it's a very uh, yeah, it's a very exciting uh, feeling to to know that we're gonna go get to do two shows: Beijing and um, Shanghai. And Shanghai, yeah. And we've been to Taiwan once before in 2006, but not in Taipei. We played in some smaller town, but now we're playing finally in Taipei. So yeah, looking forward to all this. Fantastic. And uh, just before I wrap this interview up, I must pretty ask you about your time in Fuzzy Osborne. And um, when he's playing the live shows of him, I noticed that in the set list, there's only like three Sack Wild era numbers in the main set. And is that because your, your, your styles are totally different? Like you're more suited to like the Randy Rhodes, Jakey Lee kind of style? I don't know. I, I don't really write the set list down. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's up to the boss what he wants to do. So uh, some nights he wanted to do more Sabbath stuff. Some nights he wanted to do more Randy stuff or some. I don't know. I didn't really <laughs> over analyze. Never really occurred to you. <laughs> well, we we had some uh, the Jake era stuff added back, and we we did it again. Shot in the dark and Killer of Giants. So oh, and, and, and the Ultimate Sin is one of my favorite albums yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So I I, I would I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. If uh, who and on the tour, what was like? The, the, what was your song you enjoyed playing the most? I really enjoyed all that stuff, man. I, I enjoyed doing the Sabbath stuff. I enjoyed doing the Killer of Giants. It's yeah. one of my favorites. I, I, I actually was <laughs> busting his balls about that. Yeah, because like, that was a great song actually. And the last time yeah. he played it was the Ultimate Sin tour for yeah, for yeah. '87 or something. So, yeah. I kept saying, oh, "That's a great song." Yeah. And, uh, I knew he didn't like the production of that album, but... Uh, yeah, so I that, never that, bit Christmas. He, he always says that, but I always said to Ozzy, that's a song full of fucking diamonds, man. Those yeah. songs in there, all the songs are fantastic. So I'm glad we got to do it on most of the shows, and um, I love Mr. Crowley. I, I love to play all that stuff, man. It's, what can you say? I mean, you, you get to play the Bible with a man yeah. every night, so it's not like you can pick and choose. Well, anything, anything, I'll just fucking play it and I'll be... As and happy, uh, well, one know. thing I know is actually, he's like me... With Ozzy and Farwin, you play on two different sides of the stage. Yeah, yeah, that's something I, I never thought about, you know. With Farwin, we just started out like that without really knowing what the yeah. fuck, where I should stand. I just, <laughs> I just picked that side, oh, whatever, it's going to be this side. And then um, I was just guitar player always on the you know, left side or right side. Yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> it's what it is, you know. I don't mind. Yeah. But you kept on the right side of Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> it's, it's on the left side. Uh, I think um, from his left side. So. Depends what way you're looking at it, but yeah. as you're on the stage, you're on the right hand side. It's getting a bit spinal tap. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, left, right doesn't matter. Yeah. Any side of the stage is good. Well, Gus, it's been fantastic talking to you. The album is called uh, "The Few Against Many." Yeah. Out on Century Media, May the 21st, in Amer North America, May the 22nd. I'm looking forward to it and uh, check out the live dates. And uh, yeah, Gus, all the best for the future. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>